If you've been looking for the complete guide to capturing Milky Way photos, whether you've tried it before, you're brand new and novice, this is the place for you. I'm gonna put together everything you need to know in the field to capture great Milky Way images in this video. My name's Austin James Jackson. Today, I'm out here in the beautiful Wind River Range of Wyoming, planning to shoot some Milky Way. I'm hoping to shoot at this lake that's behind me tonight. As you can see, beautiful mountains, beautiful lake. Hopefully it calms down, we can get a nice reflection. Either way, whether I shoot here or somewhere else, we're going to walk you through everything you need to know in order to shoot the Milky Way. Now, you don't have to have a really expensive camera, you don't have to have a really expensive lens, but it certainly does help if you have nicer equipment, you're going to be able to get photos that are far more detailed, far less noise. Now, concepts I'm not going to be covering this video, something that's more advanced, are things like star tracking and blue hour blending. I have other videos covering both of those. I'm not going to cover those in this video. Those are ways that are a little bit better to take night photos, but they take a lot more work and a lot more equipment. So I'm going to show you today just the standard way to take night photos where you're taking a single shot in the field, getting it all and making it happen with just that one shot. Let's first start by talking about the proper equipment and going to the proper location. There's a lot of things to think about when it comes to this. First and foremost, to shoot the Milky Way, you want to go out on a night where there's very minimal moon or um, no moon, preferably. Essentially, the problem is what the moon does is it floods out. It's like light pollution. It makes that Milky Way more faint. It's going to be harder for you to capture great photos of the Milky Way if the moon is out. And also, it's going to be hard for you to capture great photos of the Milky Way if you are shooting photos in a place that has a lot of light pollution. So you need to get far away from the city. That's why where I'm at right now is the perfect place to be. I'm hours away from any major city. There's nothing around me. It's super dark out here. So it's a great place to capture the Milky Way. Additionally, there's going to be no moon tonight, so it's a perfect night to capture great Milky Way photos. Now when it comes to your camera equipment, um, I personally am shooting with a Sony a7R 4 um, We'll talk about the camera first. Now ideally you have a camera that performs decently in low light, but you can do this with even a novice camera. Just understand that you're going to have photos that are a little bit less detailed and a little bit noisier. Ideally at the bare minimum, I'd really recommend having access to some full frame camera, but like I said, you can make it happen with any camera. You're just not going to get quite the same result. Um, I know Sony and Nikon have some really great cameras that perform well in low light, Canon and Fuji as well. But I think as of the time of making this video, the Sony and the Nikon sensors are a little bit better than everyone else when it comes to that low light performance. I'll link a little website here where you can see the kind of low light performance. Um, they look at it as dynamic range, but essentially it functions the same as low light performance. So if you are picking out a camera, you can find one there that might work well for you. When it comes to the lens, you're going to want a lens that's wide. The reason why you want a lens that's wide is because you can have a longer shutter speed, which we'll get to later, but that allows it in more light, as well as the Milky Way is pretty big in the sky. I mean, the the most zoom you can have is about 50 on a full frame or full frame equivalent. That'll make the Milky Way totally fill your frame. So I like to shoot somewhere between 14, 17, 20, 24 range, um, and maybe even up to 28. Usually I don't go much further than that. Again, we'll talk about focal length more later. Um, and additionally, if you can get a lens where the aperture uh, opens up uh, as far as possible is best. Um, F 2.8, I would say is, is great. If you have an f4, that's probably the bare minimum. You definitely want at least f4, but f2.8 is good. Um, and f1.2, 1.4, 1.8 is even better. Um, there's a lot of good prime lenses out there. One of the most popular lenses for night photos among all systems, I think, is the Rokinon 14 millimeter, which I have, and I might be using that tonight as well. That's just a fixed 14 millimeter f2.8. It's not super expensive. We're talking like somewhere between four and 600 US dollars most likely brand new. So it's not too bad compared to some of the name brand lenses. That pretty much covers um, what I have to say about lenses and cameras. Now, the only other piece of gear that you will need is a tripod. The sturdier the tripod, the better, but if there's not much wind, you really don't need a super, super sturdy tripod. I think photographers talk all day about how you need this massive tripod that's never gonna move in the wind, but the reality is you're probably not gonna shoot night photos if it's windy outside because it's gonna be so unenjoyable because it's gonna be usually pretty cold. There's not very many places where you're gonna be capturing the Milky Way where it's a warm out. It's mostly gonna be pretty cold if you're up in the mountains, or at least that's where I spend my time. So 
So most any tripod will work, um, but the sturdier you can make it, the uh, more adverse conditions that you can shoot in. And then of course, you want clear sky. You can see it's pretty clear right now. I anticipate it to stay clear through the night. That's obviously very important if you have clouds in your frame. Uh, they generally don't look very good in night photos because you're doing long exposure, so the clouds will be blurry. It just doesn't look good. So clear nights, moonless nights, dark places, the right equipment. That covers everything about equipment and location. Okay, you've got the equipment, you're in the right location. Now it comes down to how to use it. What are the proper settings that you should use for Milky Way photography? First thing is first, you'll want to use what's called the rule of 500, which means you take your shutter speed divided by 500, which is gonna equal the maximum shutter speed that you can use before seeing extreme trailing. Obviously, depending on the amount of megapixels and depending on how picky you are, um, you may need to go faster or you might be able to go slower on the shutter speed, but essentially, why this happens is because we're standing on Earth, Earth is rotating, um, so it looks like the stars are rotating, but in reality it's the Earth. But anyways, uh, the stars appear to be moving in the sky, so when you have a really long exposure, you'll start to get stars that are streaking. Generally, that's not an effect you want unless you're going for a star trail, but if you're shooting the Milky Way, you're not going for a star trail, um, and so you want to keep those exposures nice and short in order to get the sh stars nice and sharp. So, for example, let's say I'm using a 20 millimeter lens, we'll go 500 divided by 20. So that would mean that 25 seconds is my maximum shutter speed. So I'm gonna shoot at 20 millimeters. That means 25 seconds is the maximum shutter speed that I am going to use. Sometimes I'll even bump this a little bit faster just to avoid those streaking stars. So I may even go down to 20 seconds. I'm shooting with a 60, like one megapixel camera. So I do start to see those streaks probably earlier than someone that's shooting with a 12 or 20 megapixel camera. But it's totally up to you. Anywhere in that ballpark is gonna get you a really similar photo. Um, you're obviously just allowing in a slightly more or slightly less light, which is very important. The more light you can let in, the less noise you're going to have in your images and the more detail. Now, the next thing you wanna do is you probably wanna open up that aperture all the way. If you've got an F2.8 or an F4, open that aperture all the way. So I would be using F2.8. If you've got an F1.4, you can potentially stop it down to 2.8 or 2.0, even 2.2. Um, generally, the wide open aperture is not gonna give you the best image quality, especially for night photos. But if you have an F2.8 or an F4, I would still open it up all the way because you wanna get as much light as you can and allowing yourself to get more light is going to allow you to have more detail in your stars and less noise, which is gonna be more important than a small amount of sharpness. Some lenses are optimized a little bit better for astro where the corners are gonna be a little bit sharper and some are not. I can't tell you every single lens how it's gonna Form, but I know the lenses that I'm using that Rokin on 14 millimeter and this Tamron 17 to 28 perform very, very well in those night conditions. So if you're shooting on a Sony, um, would highly recommend those two lenses. Otherwise, you'll just have to try it for your own or do some research on your own to figure out if you're gonna be experiencing um, some image quality issues or not. Again, it's not a huge deal if you don't zoom in, if you're just posting on social media, you're not gonna see it, even if it's really bad, most likely, uh, unless it was really, really bad, but uh, it should be totally fine. So that's kind of my spiel on your settings that you should use. And of course, I almost forgot the ISO. Um, generally, ISO 6400 is a good place to start. You may be able to drop it down uh, to 3200 if you've got um, an, a really wide aperture. If you're going down to like F1.4, you might be able to drop that ISO down. But 6400 is a good ballpark place to start. Take some shots at 6400, see how it looks, and then you can make some adjustments from there. Now I wanna briefly touch composition because it is something that's very important at night and it's way different finding composition at night than it is during the day. Let me tell you why. So during the day, you can get a lot of detail in your foreground, you can get real close, but at night when you're shooting, if you're not doing a blue hour blend, which like I said, is not a concept we're gonna mention, if you're just taking it as one shot, you're gonna have dark foregrounds with some noise in it uh, compared to your background. So for that reason, I generally go for foregrounds that are not super detailed. Um, I don't want to have tons of flowers and, you know, tons of logs and this and that and X, Y, and Z, because those are things that are not going to look good at night if you're just doing it as one shot. So that is something that you should keep in mind when you're finding a composition. And it's always good to get out here early, put on your wide angle lens, scope out some compositions, see where you want to be, because it's a huge pain in the butt to get out here and find your composition when it's totally dark out. So that's my recommendation when it comes to compositions. Now you're probably still scratching 
scratching your head wondering, which way do I face to shoot the Milky Way? And if you didn't have that question, I bet you do now. Uh, so there is an app you can use called Photo Pills. A lot of photographers use it. It's like 10 or $12 US dollars. Um, they have it on iPhone and Android. Um, there's also a couple other apps, but I personally think Photo Pills is probably the best right now. Um, and that app is really nice because it shows me augmented reality. So I can get out here early and I can look uh, what I can point my phone up and use my phone's camera and I can see roughly where the Milky Way is going to be. This is really helpful uh, when I'm out in the field to know exactly where it is. But you might not always be out in the field. You might be trying to plan a trip and trying to figure out where to go. So if you are back home, um, you can also use photo pills. It's a little bit more complicated, too much to explain for this video, but there's plenty of other videos on YouTube about it if you're interested. But I will tell you that generally in the early season, so let's say like March to June, the Milky Way is going to appear uh, almost as an arch in the sky. You can shoot the panorama early in the spring season, uh, and that is going to appear to the east and southeast. Right now, uh, it's the beginning of July. My Milky Way is kind of starting in the southeast, ending in the south, south west and later in the summer you know august september even october the milky way is going to move and it's going to start in the southwest and end directly in the west you get a different kind of shot depending on what time of year you're shooting um where depending on where the milky way is at you know earlier in the spring you've got those longer nights milky way doesn't come out until much later so you can shoot the panorama later in the summer like right now when you're kind of middle of the summer you're shooting the milky way sideways you're generally just shooting the core it's too high in the sky to get the panorama for the most part and then later in the season comes up right after sunset and it's really nice you can get it coming straight up and down which is always really cool so always different times of year give you different opportunities so understand what time of year you're going out at and then understand which direction you want to be facing so it's nice if you can go to a spot where maybe there's a lake with a mountain that's facing the right direction now before we step away until it gets dark there's one more thing you should do on your camera i want you to adjust a few settings that's going to help you to get a better photo Photos. First thing you want to do, and most any camera is going to have this DSLR mirrorless, no matter the brand, is look for something that's called something like high ISO NR or high ISO noise reduction or some kind of in-camera noise reduction. You want to turn that off. Essentially what that does is the camera takes a second exposure um, and it uses those two exposures, reduces the noise on the photos um, in camera. I'm going to show you a lot better way to do this. So this just takes a lot more time. It doesn't generally work that well either, at least at the time of making this. I've never seen a camera that does it well. So turn that off so that you don't spend a lot of extra time shooting those night photos. Now on my Sony camera, yours might be different, but on mine, there's one setting called long exposure noise reduction and another called high ISO noise reduction. So make sure that both of those are off. Now, if you are using a mirrorless camera, a lot of mirrorless cameras, I think they're available on other mirrorless cameras, but I know they're available on all Sony's, have a setting called bright monitoring. If you go into your custom buttons, you're going to set that bright monitoring to a button that you don't use, and then you're going to use it at night. It's really hard to explain what it does, but when I'm out here in the dark, I'll show you guys what that bright monitoring does, and it really helps you to frame out your shot, in my opinion. Um, so with that being said, I think at this point, we just need to wait for it to get dark. It's going to be a couple hours. I usually have to wait about an hour 15, an hour 30 after sunset before it's totally dark to get that Milky Way. So I'm going to go get warm, get a little snack, and then we're going to jump back out here at 11, um, 11 or so when it's totally dark. And then I will kind of walk you through. You're not going to be able to see super well, but I do have a light. So I'll show you guys what I'm walking through on the camera and show you guys how I end up shooting in the field after we've done all the prep work that we've already done. All right, so let's talk about in the field what you need to do. And wow, does this tripod look very unstable and not straight, but I promise you guys it is straight. Okay, so first thing is first, um, I always wanna turn down the brightness on my screen. When the screen is too bright, a lot of times it messes up your eyes. And when you look at the images in the image review, you'll think that they're a lot brighter. And then when you get home, you'll realize they're actually a lot darker. On my camera, and what I'd recommend you do, set it to a custom button. I have my image brightness on this C3 up here. So I click that. Normally, um, when I'm not shooting night photos, I leave it in sunny weather. You can see it's a lot brighter. So I go down to manual, usually minus one or minus two, depending on how I'm feeling. Set it right there for my night photos. Now I'm all set. Now regarding the setting we were talking about earlier called bright monitoring, I have that set to my C4 down here. When I press that button, watch what happens on the screen on the live view here. 
you can see it just makes things a little bit brighter. Um, and it's not by a lot. Right now, this light that I'm using to film this video is messing it up. When you do it in the field, you'll see a bigger difference. Essentially, what this is good for is it helps you to find your composition. So, you know, when you can see the Milky Way, so you can see roughly where you need to be angled, where you need to be pointed in order to capture that photo with the composition that you are looking for. I always use this. This is only going to be a feature on mirrorless cameras, and I believe might potentially only be on Sony. Someone in the comments let me know though if you do have it on like a Nikon or a Canon or Fuji or any other kind of camera. Now next, of course, make sure your camera's in full manual mode. We will set our three settings. You can see mine are already set. I'm gonna use a 25 second shutter speed, I'm shooting at 17 millimeters, 500 divided by 17 is 29 and change. I'm gonna round that down to 25. Um, my aperture, I'm gonna do f2.8 wide open for this Tamron 17 to 28 lens. And ISO, we're gonna go 6400 here. Um, like I had mentioned, that's kind of the good base ISO to start with. Now that your settings are dialed in, last thing you gotta do is set up uh, your shooting mode and your focus. So you can hit the function button. I have these all customized on custom dials, but I'll show you how to do it the long way, which is probably how a lot of you guys will be doing it here. So you're gonna hit the function button. Usually it's indicated by FN on some cameras, uh, like Nikon specifically, I believe there's a little I like information. Hit that button. Scroll over, first thing you wanna do is adjust the drive mode. Um, you may be in single shooting or continuous shooting, that's what most people shoot in when they're not using a tripod. When you're on a tripod, you wanna be on two second. That's gonna prevent, uh, when you push the shutter down, uh, you can take your hands off the camera so the camera doesn't move at all once the exposure fires, which is especially important in night photos where you've got those long exposures. Hit that function button, go back, change the focus mode, change it to manual focus there, you can hit okay. Now we're in total manual focus, so you will have to dial your lens. What you're not gonna see here, um, but what I'm doing right now is I am dialing the focus of the lens. I'm adjusting the ring with my hand. You can see in this top left corner here, I have the focus magnifier on, so it's 5.9 times. What I like to do is get the focus close. On most lenses, uh, don't go all the way to the maximum infinity like this. On most lenses, I like to go where the numbers turn to infinity and go about right there. So, you know, 90M on mine is about in focus. Now you should be able to see stars as you zoom around the screen. The focus magnifier is still on. I'm not adjusting the focus ring anymore. I'm gonna just zoom around and try and find a bright star seems like this star is the brightest. It's important that you get the focus close um, by using that technique I just showed you, getting it close to infinity before you do this, because if it's totally out of focus, you won't see any stars at all. So now I know I'm close. Now I can take my lens and I can adjust. You can see this is out of focus, but as I come into focus, the star gets smaller. We're looking for that pinpoint sharp star, which is about right there. I'm not gonna mess with my focus anymore. I'll press my shutter halfway to get rid of the focus magnifier. Now I'm ready to shoot. I'm gonna go ahead and fire off my shots. I wanna get eight identical shots in the field, um, just back to back, not adjusting the frame at all. I wanna grab those eight shots, and then I wanna grab two, what we call dark frames. So I'm gonna put the lens cap on and capture a completely black frame at the same time, same ISO, same temperature, all the same conditions need to be present. And then we're gonna stack those together um, in the software later, which I will link a video to show you how to do if you're interested in learning how to do that. Alrighty guys, well that is a wrap. Hopefully that was helpful for you. I know there's a ton of information packed in here. Make sure to save this video so you can rewatch it a few times and really learn. Um, and of course, as you saw, I put a bunch of timestamped videos in here linked with other Milky Way videos, post-processing, you know, advanced techniques, X, Y, and Z, all those things. Um, and so I will also include those down below in the description. I'll have a, just a little short list of a bunch of other Milky Way videos. I also have a um, whole playlist here on YouTube dedicated to Milky Way. So if you're new to Milky Way and you want to learn, this is a great playlist to check out. I would highly recommend it. Of course, it always helps me to, if you subscribe to my channel, it's going to help you as well because you're going to get weekly videos that are going to help you to become a better photographer. If you guys have any questions, comments, um, any tips of your own, anything like that, let me know down below. Um, I always try and respond to everybody. I love to hear from you guys. Um, and of course, I always really, really appreciate your support. Really hope this video is helpful for you. If it was, leave me a thumbs up, um, send it to a friend. This will help. And again, thank you so much for being here. Hope you guys have a good one. This is Austin James Jackson, and we'll see you guys next time.